Welcome back to Podcast 51 of 2021. I'm your host, Kiev O'Neill. You can follow me on Twitter at OBKiev. Follow us at The Odds Breakers and follow us on social media slash The Odds Breakers. This episode is being brought to you by footballcontest.com. To get into the Circa Millions, the Westgate Super Contest, and the William Hill, and any other Vegas contest, make sure you check them out. Ask for Maddie. Tell them The Odds Breakers sent you. You can put your plays in from anywhere in the whole United States or the world. If you'd like to help us out with our costs, sponsor the website, the podcast, we'd love to help you out. Please visit theoddsbreakers.com. Click shop and become a member. For $24.99 a month, you can get my plays and premium plays before the line moves. You can also check out our other handicappers there for your specialty sports. And if nothing else, please visit theoddsbreakers.com and become a free picks newsletter subscriber. My friends, we also have made some overdue modifications to the website. Lots of free picks are being put out daily, and maybe you do not want that many emails. So under free picks, you can now just sign up for individual handicappers that you want the picks from. You can do one or multiple ones rather than just get the blanketed newsletter. Now, what you can do with the blanketed newsletter is you can put it into a special mailbox, put a rule in there through your Gmail, Outlook, or your Yahoo or whatever platform that you use, or you can just send it to spam if you don't want to see any of it. Uh, obviously, you can unsubscribe, but there are better ways now to manage all those emails. So I was glad to be able to put that put that system in before the football season and everything goes crazy. So make sure you do that. We are holding on to our lower rate right now of twenty four ninety nine for my plays. And that's going to go up, but we are offering a promotion if you want to lock that in for life. The only thing that will ever go up is it with the consumer price index, but otherwise you will lock in that low rate as long as you keep your subscription. And we'll also give you a free odds breaker shirt for any sign up with any handicapper over the next month. So make sure you guys check that out. Otherwise, not a big deal. We're always going to have free plays for you at theoddsbreakers.com. If you are an experienced handicapper and like to get your name out there more and you have some records to show or some material, please visit theoddsbreakers.com and contact us. Maybe there's a spot for you where we can help you. It'd be best to contact us now before it gets crazy with the football season starting. We have a great show for you today because I'm going to go over NFL preseason week one and Going to cover almost every game. There's a couple premium plays that I'm just reserving for members. That's how I roll. And we're going to later get D Nasty on and do a little fantasy football. We're going to talk a little bit about rookies, the top rank rookies for any rookie drafts, or if you just want to know where you rank your rookies when you draft them, Dave's going to come on and discuss that. And we're going to go a little bit deeper into sleepers than we did last week when we covered our top players at each position. So can't wait for that. Before I get into NFL preseason, going to give you my college football record over the last couple years. We are at 52.74%. Seems kind of low, right? But we are actually up 48.3 units over the last few years in college, partly because of the money line sprinkles. We always say sprinkle the money line a little bit and partly because of the Kylie criterion, putting more units on bigger plays. So just did some of those numbers. NFL only at 51.7% over the last two years, but up a total of 37 units. So not terrible, could be better. Had a rough sides game last year, but our totals was 31 for 21 and i'm just looking for my exact number on that 31 21 and 3 just in nfl totals last year that's about 59 percent up about 18.5 units actually totals saved me last year last year i wasn't good in sides but i expect that to change and 
regress back to the mean where I, I'm usually pretty good around about 53, 54% history betting in the NFL. So we're at least looking to do that or better this year, put a lot of time into NFL and college prep. Hopefully it all pays off for everybody. All right. Let's get into a little NFL preseason week one. Now, before I get too deep into it, I'm just going to disclose that I value coaching records and motivation in the preseason a lot more than anything else. A lot more than the strength of these teams. A lot of the best teams might be playing their worst players. A lot of the best teams might be playing some pretty good players, too. All coaches are different. Now, this year we have a lot of new coaches, but in general, I like to look at the new coaches sometimes wanting to make a little bit more of a splash that very first week, right? They don't want to start on a losing mindset, so they might try a little bit harder, and in many cases, there's another handicapping philosophy in the preseason. A lot of these new coaches might have quarterback controversies. They're not married to any of these quarterbacks unless the GM really, really has one for them. So I definitely look for that. Any team really with the quarterback controversy doesn't necessarily have to be a new coach, right? Obviously, the coach's motivation per week. Sometimes they want to win week one. Sometimes they want to win the middle for some reason. And sometimes they either completely dog it or they're completely good on the final week of preseason. Now, the obvious change this year is that there's only three preseason games. Does that completely throw off the data? I don't think so because there's still a first game and a last game and There's a middle. Weeks two and three are kind of the middle on what happened in the previous years. That's the way I'm going to look at it until proven wrong, right? So I put emphasis on that, and I'm a little bit more careful about these teams' strengths. For example, if the Buffalo Bills are going to play the Jacksonville Jaguars or the Houston Texans, it's not going to be a 10-point spread or a 13-point spread it's still going to be a very low spread. I mean, for example, the Bills are playing the Lions this Friday, and they're only favored by two. It's in Detroit, but still, (laughs) you know? I mean, this goes to show you how important it is to look at other factors in the preseason and not strength. The line's telling you this when you look at it. Let's get into it then a little bit. First game we have Thursday night. Two games, Washington versus New England is the first one. Now, looking at some of these coaching records, Washington, Ron Rivera, 6-3 and three on week one. That's pretty huge, right? He's 20-16 and 16 in the preseason lifetime. But he's playing another coach that's very motivated week one, and that happens to be Bill Belichick, who's 46-36 and 36 in the preseason. But on week one, Belichick is 14 and seven. 14 and seven, right? That's huge. I mean, these coaches are, there's a good chance they're going to put a little effort here. Now, New England's got some backup quarterbacks that's looking to steal that job from good old Cam, obviously, Mac Jones, right? They also have a lot of players that didn't play last year that might be itching to play a little bit in the first quarter. Maybe some of the players think they're not going to make the team. So there's a lot of a lot of motivation on Belichick's side, but same time, Fitzmagic's on a new team. You might want to make a little bit of a splash there. Tyler Heineke and Kyle Allen battling out for second string. I can see some motivation on them. So these co- coaches kind of cancel each other out, and I'm not going to make a play on it. Look at Pittsburgh versus Philadelphia. Now, this one's interesting to me. Because Pittsburgh already played a preseason game, right? Last week, beat up the Cowboys. Now they're going on the road. Do they kind of get that win past them? I mean, Mike Tomlin is 8-8 eight and eight now, very first week. But just in general, 32-23. and 23. He wins a lot in the next weeks. Being that he played that Hall of Fame game, that completely throws me off of betting him right? Is he going to be motivated to win more preseason games? I don't know. But I do know that the Eagles have a brand new coach in Nick Sirianni, and there's no numbers on him. Now, what I will say 
is I always lean the new coach a little bit, like I mentioned before, but I don't think it's quite enough for me to make a play on Philly. You know, not quite enough there for me. Also, Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins are really, really battling it out for second string position. This next game, and I believe it's on a Friday, we have Atlanta versus, or actually the Titans at Atlanta. This game is about a pick em. Pretty high total on this, 38 for a preseason game. What a, the, These two teams had very, very bad defenses last year. Atlanta's gotten better. I guess the Titans might have gotten a little bit better too. But what I do know is that Atlanta's got that new coach there, right? I mean, Arthur Smith has been there and done that, but this is his first year coming into the preseason. So going to give him a little bit of an edge for that. Number two, Atlanta's at home. Atlanta might want to start out with a bang with the new coach at their home. And number three, Mike Vrabel is two and six in the preseason. Now that's not a big sample size either. And he's actually one and one in week one. But what I do know is that the Titans have a lot of old stars that do not need to play in the preseason. You're not going to see Derrick Henry, right? Probably not going to see much Tannehill minus one drive. Nuts to do that. Probably won't see A.J. Brown much. Julio Jones, after that trade, no way they're risking him. So their stars are probably not going to play. And behind Ryan Tannehill, you got Logan Woodside and Matt Barkley. Not a ton of confidence in either one of those, right? A.J. McCarron and Felipe Franks are battling it out more for the Falcons at home. So because of Vrabel's record, because of the situation in Atlanta, I am going to make a play here on Atlanta. I think it's worth a couple stars just based on Arthur Smith getting a good start. We're going to throw a couple couple units on Atlanta. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Thank you, sir. May I have another? Thank you, sir. May I have another? Next game, Miami versus Chicago. Miami is plus three. Plus three and a half at some books. It looks like Chicago's creeping up. Total is 35 and a half. This one was a little head scratcher for me. We don't have quite enough data. I don't like one season. If you remember the podcast that I talked about these coaching records, I said I'd like, I'd like to at least have two seasons worth of preseason data to make any educated decision here. Somewhat educated. Brian Flores is 3-1 and one in the preseason. Obviously, his first week was 1-0. and oh. So could be some motivation there. Now, the Bears are a mess. There's a little bit of court quarterback controversy. But is Dalton and Fields really going to be battling it out the first week? The Bears are 0-3 week one for Nagy. So I do have data on that. But this line is really making me scratch my head. And I can't figure out why the Bears are actually uh, favored by three and a half points here at home. Because in my opinion, the Dolphins still have a lot of stuff to figure out. And... Jacoby Brissett's there, and he can definitely score a few points. So I'm going to possibly take a little bit deeper of a look at it right now. But I'm going to tell you right now that I'm definitely leaning Miami here, uh, plus the points. Next game, Cleveland versus Jacksonville. Jacksonville, brand new coach with Urban Meyer. Cleveland Kitchens. Freddie Kitchens has not been there that long. Or sorry, Kitchens. He's the old coach. Stephen Kevin Stefanski started in 2020. No data on these teams. Not sure what to expect. I, I know Urban Meyer is a motivated dude. A little bit got some, maybe a little bit of Harbaugh in him. So uh, I think that I would lean Jacksonville. But to be honest with you, with these two teams, literally nothing would surprise me. Next game, 
is Denver versus Minnesota. And we actually have a premium play on this. And there was some disagreement with me on this one, but uh, just from some respected podcasts, but I think they're missing something that's pretty important. So I have to pass on this game, but it was a play that we did make about a week, week or two ago. Now, New Orleans versus Baltimore, we shared this play already. This was a free play that we gave out a couple weeks, but of course we're betting Baltimore, right? And we got it at minus two and a half. Now, Baltimore is all the way up to... Eh, it's about the same. It's minus 125. I think we got minus one. I think it was about the same. It's kind of bouncing back and forth. Some people are betting uh, New Orleans. I don't I don't know. Maybe because of the quarterback issue. But you can't discount the fact that Harbaugh is 12-1 and one on week one in the preseason. Right? 12-1. and 37-12 and 12 in preseason. Second best record around for preseason football. I mean, that's almost an auto bet. We gave that out a couple weeks ago. We're still going to play that one, obviously. Next game, we have New York versus New York. And this is another one of those games where you have coaches that haven't played in the preseason. Joe Judge, first year last year. Robert Sala, first year this year. Nothing would surprise me here. Slightly to the Jets at home, probably going to try to start their season out with a bang here, right? Probably. Next game, Houston versus Green Bay. And Green Bay, lots of controversy around what happened with Rodgers, right? And now everyone's not sure about love. Well, I'll tell you right now, if Lub has Twitter, and if he's looking at Twitter, Jordan Love, that is, right? Backup quarterback. He's probably going to give this one hell of a ride. <laughs> but the problem is, it's minus three. I mean, the Packers are favored by a full field goal here at home against a new coach Texans team. For all that I just said, it is completely a stay away game for me. It does have a pretty low toll of 33 and a half though. So I'll lean to the over on that one. Next game, the Kansas City Chiefs versus the San Francisco 49ers. And we have a premium play on this game, so we will pass on this one. Now the next game is Seattle Seahawks versus the Las Vegas Raiders, right? Now we do have another play on this one. Looking at this situation, you have two coaches that actually win. 25 and 15 for Pete Carroll and good old John Gruden, 37 and 17, 69%. So massive record for both of these coaches, really. Pete Carroll at 63%, John Gruden at 69%. But the thing that I'm looking at right here, the Raiders at home, new stadium, Going to have some crowd at this game, right? And I'm also looking at the fact that you can't deny John Gruden is 10-0 and 0 the very first week. 10-0. and 0. So hot right now. You know, that brings me to Pete Carroll. Obviously still a great record. He's 9-3 and three week one. I can see both coaches still kind of trying to win this first game a little bit. But the biggest thing that I'm looking at here is the backup quarterback. You have Marcus Mariota that thinks he should be the starter in New in Las Vegas. And then you have Geno Smith backing up Russell Wilson in Seattle. And I'm sorry, Geno Smith is not an NFL quarterback. I feel a lot more confident with the Raiders at home here than I do the Seattle Seahawks. Plus, the Raiders are going to play their offensive line a little bit low, longer because they have a lot of guys coming in to the offensive line as brand new starters, in my opinion. So that's the angle I'm going with the Raiders for about a star and a half. Now, in the next game, the LA Chargers versus the LA Rams, three and a half point spread for the Chargers. Obviously, they're both playing where they play in Los Angeles, the new 
SoFi Stadium there. Three and a half point spread. Now, new coach, obviously, for the Chargers. And I really like Brandon Staley. He's going to be fantastic. But the question is, what's McVay going to do? And McVay, eh, one and two the first week. Pretty even record. Six and six in the preseason. Not a ton of information. But the spread's a little bit too high for me to make a bet on Brandon Staley here. Not at three and a half. Have to pass that one. And the final game, we're going to bring up Carolina versus Indianapolis. Frank Reich is 4-4 four and four in the preseason. Matt Rule obviously didn't get to coach in the preseason last year, so we don't have enough information on that. Because of this, definite pass for me. Plus, there's a big quarterback issue going on in Indianapolis, so you might get see some more motivation from Jacob Eason there, who's got a year in, and Sam Ellinger that was just late drafted. There's also Brent Huntley there. So I could definitely see these guys playing, hopefully to you know start the season if Carson Wentz doesn't play. They didn't make a move at quarterback here. So Indianapolis is live because of that. But at the same time, Sam Darnold, uh, coming onto a new team, might want to get his feet wet, wet a little bit more. So i uh, going to pass on this game. So to recap, we're going with the Atlanta. At about Pickham. We're obviously going with the Ravens at minus two and a half, minus 125. Still love that. There was a three-star play, actually, on that one. Good old Harbaugh. And the Raiders is a two-star play for uh, versus Seattle playing against good old Geno Smith. My friends, if you have any questions about any other preseason games, feel free to tweet us at the Odds Breakers. Now it's time to get into a little fantasy football rankings with our guy, D Nasty. And now it is time for a little fantasy football. We got our guy D Nasty back to break down a little rookie dynasty draft today. Dave, how you doing this week, man? I'm doing awesome. Let's go. I love doing rookie drafts. I know. I know. It's it's fun, especially when you're in dynasty leagues. You know, the rookies are key. They're the future. And it's fun to see where these kind of they, they fall in some of these drafts. Obviously, we, me and you have already done some, so we have a good idea of how good these rookies are and where they should be ranked. But, you know, we both have our own little system, and so it's going to be fun to go over. And, you know, if you don't do Dynasty Leagues, this could still be relevant to your real draft because, you know, where are these guys going to kind of sit? And, you know, we'll mention that a little bit as well. But um, I think what we're going to do then, Dave, we'll we'll do five apiece. I'll do five, you do five, you know, and we'll just get to like 30 picks or so. We don't need to get into defense unless there's someone that you really like in defense coming because, like we said the last couple of years, it, you shouldn't even start getting defense until uh, the third or fourth round, right? Exactly. Yes, definitely. I, I probably third or fourth. Yeah, I'd say even after that, maybe you aren't even go there because there's still in third round. There's still some good players even in the third and fourth round still. Right, and there's middle linebackers that are late drafted that just become stars anyway. It's not, it's not always like that very first guy, you know. So, um, defense players a lot easier to come by. And they, they don't have as much upside as offensive players. So that's the reason. But we'll do that. And then we're going to go over our actual sleepers per position. I know we touched on them last week for running backs, wide receivers, quarterbacks, tight ends. But but I added a few more. And I'll let you know if it's a draftable sleeper or something. Somebody you just kind of want to keep your eye on. Because after every draft, you have something in your mind that could happen, right? So you might want to keep your eye on some of these teams. So we'll go over that as well. All right, then, my man. Let's, without further ado, let's get right into these dynasty rankings. So I'm going to go over my first five, and my number one guy is Najee Harris. And I think that's going to be in most boards. I think Najee's got the most upside for Pittsburgh. I just don't see Snell or anybody else uh, taking any too many touches from him. The, the way he was drafted, he is poised to take over a large percentage of those snaps. And if you remember Le'Veon Bell and uh, Connor and a few other guys always had success running for Pittsburgh. So Najee Harris, number one. <clears throat> number two, Travis Etienne. There's a reason that Jacksonville went up for him. They wanted to put him with Trevor Lawrence. They grew up well together at Clemson. They're hoping this is going to be a huge one-two punch for the future. Sorry to all you Robinson owners out there. Number three, believe it or not, 
I have Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase has grown on me more and more. I just think that he his attitude, his friendship with Burrow, his speed, uh, his his football knowledge was fantastic with the LSU. And I know he sat out last year, but I don't think that matters. That's just less wear and tear on his body. I have number three, Jamar Chase. Number four, Dave, I have Kyle Pitts. And Kyle Pitts is going to be a tight end that's going to get you a ton of points over the next 10 or 15 years, in my opinion. He is extremely hyped. I know that. But there's a reason that Atlanta traded Julio Jones. And it's because they wanted Kyle Pitts to take over. And they're going to get him on a cheap rookie contract over the next four years or so. And uh, that's important to teams. So they invested in him. I'm sure he's going to catch a lot. He was an absolute beast at Florida. Number five, Javante Williams from Denver. I believe that Javante Williams is going to unseat Melvin Gordon. If not this year, it's going to be next year. Dave, who are your five? Uh, similar five, but in a little bit different order. And I do have to stress, too, that this is in a one-quarterback league. If you're in a two-quarterback league, I, I know like some of my dynasty leagues, you're definitely going to want to move all the quarterbacks up to the top five as well. But if you're only in a one-quarterback league, this is definitely the way you want to go, is how Kiev and I are ranking these guys right now. So, number one, I had Najee Harris as well. Uh, he's, he could be the next LeVon Bell or James Conner. Well, not, let's not say the James Conner because he was always hurt, but he could be the next LeVon Bell. <laughs> he is. And then uh, number two, Jamar Chase. Uh, Joe Burrow loved throwing to Chase in college. You know, he'll love throwing to, get to him again in Cincinnati uh, as long as his knee holds up. Uh, there's still some concerns with Burrow on his knee. Uh, he's been a little timid so far in practices, but I think once the regular season rolls around, he'll be fine. Uh, number three, Kyle Pitts. Uh, like Kia was saying, definitely a once-in-a-generational kind of talent. Uh, he's, he was just awesome at Miami. Uh, with Julio got, gone, it's going to open up a ton of targets for him as well. Matt Ryan loves to throw the ball, too. So, uh, number three. It, actually, Pitts has been going number one or two in some of my drafts, even. So, uh, P- Pitts at number three. Doesn't uh, Pitts remind you, like, of Vernon Davis coming in? That kind of hype? Yeah, definitely does. Maybe even a little bit more. Right. Exactly. So he could be boom or bust. Hopefully he's a boom, but uh, he could be a bust though too. You never know. He could come with all this hype and then not even pan, not end up end up, end up just like Hayden Hurst last year. Everyone thought Hayden Hurst was going to be the best sleeper of the draft, and then he ended up sucking the whole year. And he just yeah. was average all year. True. He didn't really suck, but he was average. But number four, Travis Etwan. Etwan. It's Ian. <laughs> yeah. uh, he enters a crowded backfield, but I, I look for him to take over from James Robinson. They'll share to start with, but I, I definitely like him going forward. Uh, they're, they're, they're making a lot of trick plays for him as well, and they're, they're actually drawing up plays for him to be, line up as a wide receiver. So I definitely could see him taking over. If not, start out, he'll be definitely seeing a lot of catches in, in PPR leagues as well. Uh, and then number five, Javante Williams. Uh, for a lot of the same reasons Kiev started, stated as well, uh, I do like him to take over midway through the year for Melvin Gordon. Uh, he's definitely their back of their future there. Good stuff, man. I totally agree. Why don't you go through your six through ten? Sounds good. Number six is one of my sleeper picks that I really like as a rookie is Michael Carter. Uh, the Jets were smart to draft him. Uh, he's really explosive. Uh, they really, he doesn't really have many challengers either. Kevin Coleman and Ty Johnson are not going to beat him out. Oh, and Michael Perrine from last year. I don't see any of them really claiming the role as the number one back there. I think uh, Michael Carter will actually start out as the number one back there. And if he doesn't, he'll be the number one back after a few games as well. Uh, then number seven, I have Trey Sermon. Uh, I do like him. I think he could actually take over from Raheem Mostert uh, halfway through the year, uh, if not sooner. Uh, he's very athletic. They like what he's they've seen in camp so far. And Jeff Wilson Jr. is also hurt as well. He, he won't be back until mid-year, so or at least six games. He's on the PUP. So and and Tevin Coleman's gone. So definitely opens up some opportunities for him. Uh, number eight, Trevor Lawrence, definitely the best quarterback in the draft. Uh, if you need a quarterback, definitely take him. He's going to be the, definitely he'd be like a Peyton Manning type like year for him. Uh, he does actually actually have quite a few weapons with the Jags as well, so I like him at eight. Uh, Trey Lance at nine. Uh, he's kind of a sleeper too, but he could be kind of like a Pat Mahomes. He might end up sin the whole year, so he could be like a very big boomer bust. 
Uh, not anything like a Pitts. Pitts is a pretty safe bet that he's going to get a lot of receptions. But Trey Lance, we don't know if he's going to start or not. Uh, Shanahan keeps saying Jimmy is his guy there. Uh, but they do have some plays designed for him. He could be kind of like a Jalen Hurts last year. He'll come in, run a few plays. Uh, if Jimmy struggles halfway through the year or, any, or midway through the year, uh, he definitely could see him coming coming in and taking over. Uh, number 10, uh, this is a, kind of a toss-up between him and the next person I have. But I have number 10, Javon, Devontae Smith. Uh, Eagles are very thin at wide receiver right now. They don't really have much competition either there. Uh, Jalen Rieger hopefully can come back this year and have a strong season. Uh, but I look, look for him to line up opposite him. Good stuff. Um, I really like how you went on a limb with Michael Carter there. A lot of people don't have him that high. But I, I moved him up too as a somewhat sleeper, but you moved him up as a very large sleeper. So interesting thoughts on that. And I do agree with you there. They, they drafted him to be the, their number one guy. So whoever you have there, Perrine or, you know, anybody else on the Jets, it's not looking good. So number for me, I got number six. I have Devontae Smith for Philly, and I'm higher on him. I think he was your 10th. But what I see in him is just the speed, the knowledge of the game. You have your Heisman winner. Uh, everything tests out great except for the criticism is his size. I don't care. The guy's a complete athlete and a football player. Marvin Harrison reminds me of Marvin Harrison. Skinny coming out of college, but just turning out to be extremely dominant. Uh, number six. No, wait, wait, number seven. Elijah Moore. Hearing Hello. so much good stuff. I believe he's taking the number one position Number one receiver on the Jets now, from what I'm hearing, man. Um, Elijah Moore is shocking me, and I had to move him up a little bit. Number eight, Trey Sermon from San Francisco. They are they drafted him for a reason, and I love my master, Dave, but, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Trey Sermon's going to take over eventually, and he's going to get – they drafted him to take a beating. You know how San Fran is. They're a running team. He's going to get his. He's going to probably start with uh, 20%, then 30%, then 40%. Next week, we'll do our running back rankings, uh, our running back share of touches. But uh, Trey Sermon, number eight. Number nine, Jalen Waddell from Miami, partnered back up with Tua Tunga Viola. So I think, you know, Jalen Waddell graded out amazing. As a matter of fact, you know, a lot of people had. Waddle is the better draft pick than Devontae Smith. Um, I was disagreeing on that, but a lot of people had Chase, Waddle, and then Smith. And then number 10, I have Trevor Lawrence for all the reasons you said. Quarterback, you need a quarterback, you move him up a little bit, right? If you're completely screwed on quarterbacks, let's say that uh, you had like Phillip Rivers or something and he retired and <laughs> didn't have any good backups, maybe you drafted uh, – uh, Jordan Love, and <laughs> he might never take over. We'll see what happens there, but uh, Trevor Lawrence for sure. So I'll go 11 through 15 then. Uh, Rashad Bateman is next for me from Baltimore. I'm hearing great things for Bateman. They kind of drafted him pretty high as well in the first round. I expect him to make a dent at least. I know Marquise Hollywood Brown is the man right now, but you know he's he complains a lot. Maybe that's why they drafted Bateman. And who knows? Maybe he'll be dumped. Number 12, I have Michael Carter. Just for everything you said, I thought I was a little bit higher on him. You're higher than me on him, so I like to see that. Number 13, Terrence Marshall from Carolina. Uh, you know, after um, DJ Moore, they don't have a ton there, so uh, I think Samuel's there, but I, think I expect big things out of Terrence Marshall. Number 14, Kadarius Toney from the Giants. It's going to be it's it's going to be him second. Uh, you know, he's going to eventually get a lot of plays. A lot of people like his speed, his football knowledge. He also killed it at Florida playing by Kyle Pitts. So, I'm expecting some good things out of him. And Galladay's always hurt, right? So, well, exactly. well, I think Tony is could be a great pick for you. Uh, Justin Fields is my next one at number 15 because they're already talking and this could be all noise but this you, there's all these bears you know pages and facebooks and things like that they're always saying that fields is close to taking a number one position so i found that really interesting who do you got dave all right number 11 uh Jalen waddle uh he's got tyreek hill like quickness for the slot uh dolphins want to 
throw the ball a little bit more. And I think that's a great pick. And he's, he had chemistry with two of them from back in the day. So I like this pick at number 11. Uh, Rashad Bateman, uh, they didn't really have a good, true go-to guy. Uh, they weren't really happy with their receiving corps. They brought in quite a few receivers. Sammy Watkins, Tylen Wallace, another rookie sleeper. He's a deep sleeper, but uh, definitely a guy you want to keep an eye on, too. Uh, so I think Rashad Bateman has a chance, to, if healthy, uh, to do some good things there. Uh, I have Number 13, I have Justin Fields. Uh, I've heard a lot of the hype as well. Uh, I think Dalton will start out the year as a starting quarterback, but I don't think it'll take too long for Fields to take that position over. Uh, and show what he can do. Uh, number 14, Elijah Moore. Uh, same, a lot of the same reasons that you said, Kiev. Uh, he's been looking really good in practice. They, he's really been impressing the coaches. And that had no, nothing but good ca- things coming from their camp. Uh, so I like him at 14. On uh, number 15, Kenneth Gainwell. Guy I talked about on the last podcast as well. Uh, he's a plug-and-play backup for Miles Sanders. Uh, he's very undervalued right now. He could displace Boston Scott. Uh, Kerry Johnson's there which is not no one that he needs to really beat out. Karrion Johnson will probably end up getting cut. So the only competition he really has is Boston Scott. So definitely like him as a handcuff for Miles Sanders. All right. No, good stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I was looking at him a little bit more, too. Why don't you go 16 through 20? Sounds good. 16, I have Zach Wilson, another Jet. Uh, Wilson, like Lawrence, is guaranteed to have a starting job. So if you need a starting quarterback and if you're looking for a quarterback, uh, he's going to have some weapons too as well. He's a nice young running back in Carter and Elijah Moore too. Uh, and they actually they have Crowder there and they brought over Keelan Cole. And Denzel Mims, who's been definitely dropping like a bomb on the depth chart, so stay away from him. But uh, they definitely have some talent there to form the throw too. Uh, 17, Rondell Moore. I like him. Uh, they said he's really explosive. He's a little undersized, kind of like a Devontae Smith, uh, but he's really explosive. Uh, he could be a great addition there, too, as well, opposite DeAndre Hopkins and, their de- and Christian Kirk. I think they're definitely going to find ways to get him the ball as well. Uh, number 18, Amon Ra St. Brown. Uh, Lions don't really have anybody after they lost Galladay. Uh, they're starting wide receivers right now are Brashad Perryman, Tyrell Williams, and then uh, Quintus Cephas. So there's not many people that you have to really beat out. There's not really high-quality players that you have to beat out in those three. So I definitely look for him that had a large share of targets this year, um, possibly the number one by mid to late year. Uh, and then number 19, Chubba Hubbard. Uh, he was a monster in college. Uh after losing on free agency to Mike Davis, after he left, they definitely need a valuable backup, especially after Christian McCaffrey was injured last year. Uh, so if McCaffrey gets injured again, he could be a stud. Uh, and then 20, a receiver really like. He's definitely been doing well in camp as well. And Nico Collins, a uh, guy I've been going after in a lot of my leagues as well. Uh, they lost a lot of the receivers. Randall Cobb came back to Green Bay because of Rodgers. Blah. Uh, and then... Uh, <laughs> he's actually one of the only receivers left. Him and Cooks are going to probably be the starting wide receivers there. It just depends on who's going to be throwing to him. So that's the real question mark right now. Yeah. Yeah. They um, lost a few guys there for sure. I mean, how stupid was that DeAndre Hopkins? We don't need to talk about that. But exactly. uh, yeah, Fuller went to Miami. And yeah, Nico Collins is uh, just because of that has been moved up in many depth charts. No, I like what you had to say. I've got some of the same guys there. Number 16, I got Zach Wilson for all the reasons he's going to be the starter, right? And I, I don't have a ton of trust in him holding up, but we'll see. And number 17, I do have Trey Lance. I think uh, I think Kyle Shanahan's full of shit. And uh, <laughs> he went on trapped him for a reason. This is just like that situation you saw last year with, uh, you know, they uh, – not not the uh, Bengals, but Miami. They tried to force Tua in. Now Tua wasn't so great, but they're they're gonna they're they're planning on getting rid of Garoppolo, and they, they don't want him to shine. It's gonna be Trey Lance. You know they don't want to look bad. You know the only thing about Trey Lance though is I don't like is that he's only played like eleven or twelve games at the college level. He doesn't really have that much experience. Super uber athletic, but. We'll see. I don't know if he's going to have the mental makeup to be a starting quarterback right away. So I definitely think having a year on the bench would be beneficial for him. It might, but I, I w- it could be. It could happen sooner because Garoppolo is also injury prone. You know, to a certain extent, especially after last year. You know, but there's some injuries before that when he was banged up a little bit, even on the Pats. So, yeah, man, I just think there's a reason they drafted him. 
And uh, you saw with Jalen Hurts last year. They got rid of Wentz. Absolutely. You know? But, of course, Hurts wasn't even drafted that high. You know? They're hyping second him up. And, what's that? Second round. Yeah, second. It was either the end of the first or the second. But Lance was, what, the second pick of the draft? You know? Yeah. I mean, that's that's a difference here. <laughs> Number 18, I have Rondale Moore, and for no no more Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald's a free agent, and you have Christian Kirk there, but uh, you know, Rondale Moore is gonna get some gadget plays. He might get some end arounds, he might even be out in the flat hiding out. He's gonna get some slants, crossing routes. Yeah, Rondale Moore, super fast, hard to tackle, hard to see. He's such a little dude, but he just flies right by us. So when I watched him at Purdue, I was always impressed. Number 19, I have Tutu Atwell for the Rams. I think that Tutu is going to uh, be a good third receiver there. You know, in my opinion, they they lost a few other their receivers and you know, free agency. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously you still have Woods and, and what's-his-face Cup. But yeah. Atwell is going to fit right in. I saw Atwell play for Louisville and... He was a really good player, in my opinion. I saw him make some fantastic deep catches. So, pretty high on 2 2 Atwell. And number 20, return of the Mac, buddy. Mac Jones. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't like Cam. Everybody, I, I hear. I don't like either one of those guys. I don't think Mac Jones is as good as they think he is. I think Alabama made him, I think. But I, I watched him, though. And uh, he played for Bama and he turned it up. Maybe. Maybe it was just one of those things where he's just perfect with his offensive coordinator, Steve Sarkeesian, and it might not happen in the NFL. You never know. But that's why he's not my first quarterback. He's my fourth quarterback, right? But, you know, quarterbacks are important. And uh, they they drafted him in the top 15 for a reason. He's got Belichick there. they got a lot of talent. You know, I've seen Cam falter out more than doing good over the last four or five years. So I'll go with Mac Jones, buddy. I like it. Thanks. All right, so then we have, did you do your 16 through 20? I did, yeah. Okay, so I'll go through 21 through 25. Dwayne Eskridge from Seattle, wide receiver. He's going to come in and, you know, fill in a little bit here and there, but they're saying some good things about him. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty high on him. I've heard some good things. So I, I kind of put him in as a little bit of a sleeper there. But, you know, not super convinced, but. I mean, obviously, DK Metcalf there, and and what's his face, but he uh, Lockett, right? Tyler Lockett. Lockett, yep. Tyler Lockett. But, but they got rid of a couple guys, and so he's going to be the open one. That's the way I look at it. You know, he's going to be the open one. I think on that receiver, we'll see. He's freaking fast. They've been saying too in camp. He's been actually looking pretty good in camp so far. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have a sleeper here for number twenty-two, Nico Collins for Houston. Now, you mentioned him already, but I agree, right? Um, he, he's going to get the touches there. So the, you mentioned him before me, congrats. But uh, I, <laughs> I, I like him as well. Number 23, I have Amari Rogers for the Green Bay Packers. I think Amari's going to make a little bit of noise this year. I think he's going to – I know that Rogers complained to get Cobb, and I think it was just because Cobb – he wanted Cobb to get paid. Cobb's going to make some money. But they drafted Amari Rogers high for a freaking reason. They're not going to not play him. He's going to share time with Cobb probably in this lot. So, um, you know, obviously any injury boosts him up. So I like Amari Rogers. Number 24, I have Chuba Hubbard, which was somewhat of a sleeper. You And everyone's saying, well, CMC is going to get everything. But like I said in our podcast last week, Dave, CMC is injury prone now. They're not going to use him quite as much. They don't want to burn him out. So Chuba's going to get 30% at some point. Uh, Number 25, Diami Brown from Washington. He's going to be a great addition to the Washington football team because there's only really McLaurin there now and uh, not a ton of competition for getting the Fitz match. They signed Curtis Samuel. They're saying that he's going to I don't like Samuel. I don't care, dude. (laughs) (laughs) What did he do last year? Not a lot. He did a great year last year for Carolina. Did he? Yeah. Um, I don't even know. What was his numbers last year? Let me pull him up. He had a, quite a few rushing touchdowns, too. They, they they rushed him. They had him rush the ball quite a few times, too. 77 receptions, 851 yards. That's not bad. Not 1,000 yards, only three TDs. So, yeah, but how many TDs do you have rushing, though, too, as well? 
Um, it just says TD. Let me see. I have to pull up a different stat database here. Why don't you go ahead? I'll look it up. Why don't you go ahead with your 21 through 25? Sounds good. 21, I got Terrence Marshall from the Panthers. Uh, I definitely like him as well. Uh, Marshall ended up being a curious spot because his size and speed profile from LSU uh, suggests he'd be a nice option. So I definitely like him. Uh, he'd be a nice third target behind Anderson and Moore. Uh, Javian Hawkins, I don't think you mentioned him in yours. Uh, he's my sleeper, one of my sleeper running backs for the Falcons. Uh, Davis uh, might falter in his lead back role. Uh, and the only person that is left over is Quadri Aldison. So I think Hawkins could definitely beat him out as well. So if Davis falters, uh, you could see Hawkins as your number one guy there before the end of the year. So he's definitely a sleeper, but definitely a guy to keep your eye on. Uh, number 23, I have Kadarius Tony. Uh, for a lot of the same reasons you said, uh, Galladay is hurt right now. Surprise, surprise. Uh, there's no timetable for when he's going to be back either. So uh, they said Saquon did practice today, though, so that's one good thing that they'll have him back as a weapon. But uh, I like him definitely there. He could definitely get a lot of targets there. Uh, and then 24, I have Ramondre Stevenson, running back for the Patriots. Uh, you never know with Belichick what he's going to do with his running backs. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit tougher for rookies to get some play there too, but uh, they really liked him. He's really big and strong. Uh, he's from Oklahoma. He's a smash mouth guy, kind of like Belichick likes. So I can definitely see him getting some play there. Uh, number 25, Amari Rogers. Uh, like you said, uh, they brought back Randall Cobb, and surprise, surprise, Randall Cobb was a mentor to Amari Rogers while he was in college, and his dad actually coached. Mari Rogers. So a lot of connections there with Mari Rogers and Cobb. So having Cobb back in Green Bay, I think, is only going to help Rogers even more. Uh, so I definitely like him going forward. And like you said, he's the only injury away from having a big role on the Packers. Rogers to Rogers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Roger that. <laughs> Mari. One's a diva and one's a rookie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Carry on. All right. You want me to do my next one? Finish it off in my next. Five. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Get down to thirty, and then if there's, then we'll uh, I'll, we'll both mention sleepers after that. So get to thirty. I'll do mine, and then we'll go to sleepers. Perfect. Number twenty six. I have Josh Palmer for the Chargers. Uh, they don't really have many receivers behind Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. Uh, they had Tyron Johnson and Jalen Guyton, who had a pretty good years last year. Uh, but they're really liking what they see from Josh Palmer so far in camp. Uh, he's definitely looking like the third wide out there, and they could get quite a few targets in that offense as well. Uh, 27, Deami Brown. Uh, I do like him as well, but I still do think Curtis Samuel will have a good year. He is injured right now, as is Curtis Samuel, but uh, I do think he'll be back and be the number two. But I do like Deami Brown. I think he could get quite a few targets as a number three there. Uh, and Fitzpatrick likes to throw the ball a lot too, so he could be one of his targets that he likes to throw to. Uh, number 28, uh, Dwayne Eskridge. Uh, like same similar to what we just I just said about Deami Brown and what you said about him as well. Uh, big classic size speed guy. Uh, number one for the outside. Well, Lockett does do well to toggle from the slot to the perimeter. Uh, Eskridge is a, they draft him in the second round, so I definitely see him using him a lot and getting quite a few targets. Uh, Twenty nine, um, uh, the second tight end, Pat Freermuth uh, for the Steelers. Uh, Eric Ebron is injured right now. Uh, they're saying Freemuth is taking advantage of that. He's looking very, very, very good in the camp. Uh, biggest rookie value might be might be him actually uh, as a sleeper. So definitely, definitely in the later rounds, take a look at him if you need a tight end. Uh, number thirty to finish it off, Mac Jones uh, for the Patriots. I'm not as high on him as you, but I definitely think Belichick can do wonders with quarterbacks, and he's a Brady esque type quarterback and like a pocket guy he's not going to rush or get yards rushing uh he's a, definitely a drop back kind of guy kind of like a brady so i could see him being good in belichick system and belichick doing well with him he had a few rushing yards for bama but those were more like important situations against ohio state and stuff i saw a few of it but yeah it's, it's something he doesn't want to do because he doesn't look good doing it and he'll get smashed <laughs> exactly. uh one of your guys Anthony, uh, not Anthony Schwartz, uh, Ron, Ramondre Stevenson, I have 32. So just let you just kind of throw out, throw that out there. Not too far off from you. Um, number 26, I have Kenneth Gainwell from Philly for all the reasons you said earlier. Uh, hope he does take over, but you never know. I've never been a Miles Sanders guy. Uh, so, and there's Boston Scott there, but who knows what's going to happen with Philly this year? They could, they could just be getting rid of everybody, you know, new regime type systems or situation. So 
that's something to worry about if you're a Miles Sanders owner anyway. Number 27, Josh Palmer from the Chargers. Uh, I think he's going, I know Mike Williams is there, and but he's going he's to possibly move up in the depth chart there, and I'm excited to see what Josh Palmer's going to do as a receiver. And at number 28, Emon Ross St. Brown from Detroit for all the reasons you said, Dave. Not a lot of competition there. I like Quintez Cephas in college, but he's not that fast. He only ran like a 4740. So St. Brown could definitely take over there. Number 29, J- uh, Javion Hawkins. So I do have him, Dave, just not quite as high as you. I don't know. They paid Davis some money, but that'd be weird if he did take over. Maybe Davis gets injured over there in Atlanta. I don't know. So Mike Davis was a great backup for Christian McCaffrey, but that's why it opened it up for Chuba, and we'll see. I just never looked at Mike Davis as a number one guy either, so this could be a really good sleeper if he pans out. And then number 30, I do have Pat Fryermuth. So uh, he he's going to get his from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's receivers, are, or sorry, their tight ends have kind of mostly moved on or gotten older, so... I like Friar Muth there. So a couple sleepers I just want to say. At number 34, I have Chris Evans from Cincinnati. Uh, he's going to be a gadget running back type guy. Could get a lot of passes there. And who knows, maybe Mixon gets, uh, gets a little banged up. He's been banged up lately. So Chris Evans is interesting right there. I also have at number 39, Amir Smith-Marset from Minnesota. Uh, he was a really good player in college. And I believe it was for Iowa. He burned the Badgers a couple times. I just remember him. So kind of have some up up on him. Number 41, I like Brevin Jordan from Houston, a tight end there. Um, you know, they're kind of pressing reset in Houston, so maybe he sticks and becomes the number one tight end. Number 42, I have Kyle Trask, but not for this year. Maybe even not for next year, but at least he's learning from Tom Brady. So if, if he he's one to stash now anybody after nineteen like or like the first eighteen that I gave you guys is probably not necessarily draftable you know right where right where Rondell Moore is pretty much is kind of what uh, I draw the line but these are guys to keep in mind so number forty four I have Kylan Granson from Indianapolis I know they have Doyle there but Doyle doesn't ever seem to last and Indianapolis you know could use it a speedy tight end. He was really good at SMU. And uh, number 47, Daz Newsom um, from Chicago could uh, make a little bit of noise now that they traded Anthony Miller. That helps his him out a little bit. Um, also, uh, Wims and everything, a couple of the other guys that they drafted, Riley Ridley, it really didn't turn out on the Bears. So I could see uh, Daz Newsom moving up. And I have Ian Book at number 55. Maybe he's... Well. Yeah, here's the thing. Ian Book, who knows if we can steal from Winston. Sean Payton ha- doesn't have a ton of patience, especially for turning the ball over. And you know Taysom Hill's not a real quarterback. At least Ian Book can sit back in the pocket and make a few throws. So he could be the new Drew Brees. He's got the size of Drew Brees. He's got the he played for Notre Dame. He's a smart guy. Who knows with the Ian Book? Just keep your eye on him is all I got to say, Dave. Yeah, I like him as a sleeper. A couple of rookie sleepers I had. Uh, one was Larry Roundtree from the Chargers. Uh, I think he, he could actually get into that competition with Jackson and Kelly for that second running back spot. Uh, so he's a guy you want to keep a, definitely uh, keep an eye on. Uh, Noah Gray, uh, that explosive offense, he's a tight end for the Chiefs. Uh, they have a very explosive offense. He could, be, he could get quite a few looks when people are double-teaming Kelsey, so definitely keep an eye on him. Uh, I do like Brevin Jordan. That's another guy that I do really like. Uh, and then as a linebacker, we, I'll mention just one linebacker, Micah Parsons. He's been going really high in a lot of my leagues. Uh, so he's a guy that I really like. And then Des Fitzpatrick for the Titans, uh, wide receiver for them. Uh, he's a nice young receiver for them. They do have Julio and A.J. Brown now, but they don't really have a third guy there. So uh, he can definitely take over that third spot there. And then Marset, I do really like a lot, too. I'm really high on him as a, as a sleeper in the later rounds. Uh, that's definitely a guy you should definitely keep an eye on as well. All right, good stuff, man. So after this, we will move on to just some running back sleepers. I added a few from last week, and if you remember, I did have Joshua Kelly as a sleeper for now. Obviously, that could change. Daryl Williams for Kansas City was a sleeper just because I don't think there's a lot there after CEH. Uh, Chuba Hubbard 
for all the reasons we just said, right? I mean, Chuba Hubbard's going to get some play there. Mark Ingram, because I think Mark Ingram's going to be the winner out of the Houston running back panel. Devontae Booker, I have for the Giants, just because not so... Saquon Barkley still worries me a little bit. And what I also will say, Dave, is after a podcast and, you know, after a few days hearing more about Saquon, he's off the pup list now, I did move Saquon up. I, you remember I downgraded him a lot. I think I had him down to 19 or 18. I moved him back up to 12 or 11. Sorry, I moved him to 11. So I do agree with that. I'm still not as high as you. And I did got downgrade Jonathan Taylor after uh, Nelson, their guard, also just got their – the injury, he was kind of the, the leader of that offensive line, Quentin Nelson. And then, obviously, the whole Carson Wentz thing. So, I, I moved him down two spots. So, quick, just wanted to mention that. But, uh, uh, JV on Hawkins, like we said before. And Jarek McKinnon for Kansas City. I, I think that's going to play him a little bit. You know, no no more Le'Veon Bell there to worry about. You got Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, of course. But, uh, yeah, I think... Daryl Williams and Jarek McKinnon might split like 30%. One injury boosts him up so much. So he's a little bit of a sleeper for me, Dave. Who are your running back sleepers? Uh, well, well, we talked about Javante Williams. I like him as a sleeper. He's my number one. Uh, number two, I have Gus Edwards. J.K. Dobbins looked good, very good last year, but you can't forget about Edwards. Edwards had a very good year as, as well. Uh, posted at least 700 yards and averaged at least five yards of carries each of his three seasons. So he's put up good numbers. And if, if Dobbins gets hurt, he can be the main bell cow there. So definitely a good sleeper in Edwards. Uh, Michael Carter, we already talked about him. Uh, Philip Lindsay, I talked about him a little bit last week. Uh, if he does win the job there, or if he even does split carries with David Johnson, I, I think we could have a bounce back year, and he could post a thousand yard, thousand yard season and get at least eight TDs. So uh, he's my definitely a sleeper running back. I really like this year. Jamal Williams, the ex Packer, uh, DeAndre Swift. I've heard mixed reviews about him. Uh, he really can't pass block. So uh, and then. We, Last year he had some good games, but he, some games he just vanished as well. So Jamal Williams uh, can be the thunder to his lightning, and I think uh, he'll be a solid guy there that they, they really like. So and they, they think good things about him in camp. So I like Jamal Williams as a sleeper, and then AJ Dillon, uh, Quadzilla. So I, I love him too. Is he's one of my favorite sleepers at running back. I think he could have a great year with Aaron Jones. Now he's going to get a bunch of carries. Uh, I look for him to have a huge game, huge year this year as a. Uh, Explain carries and then Tony Pollard, uh, another one I think I like. If Zeke went down last year, he had some great games. Uh, they're still going to give Zeke some rest just to keep him fresh. So definitely like Tony Pollard as a sleeper. Uh, Trey Sermon, we already talked about, and then another guy, uh, Justin Jackson. Uh, he's kind of was the forgotten guy last year. He got a little banged up, and then Joshua Kelly started some games. I think he could be a nice sleeper if he wins that second backup that backup job as the number two guy there. And then, <coughs> and then what, my last sleeper here. Jake Funk or Xavier Williams for the Rams. Uh, Daryl Henderson had trouble staying healthy last year. So one of these rookie, the young guys could step up and take over a, a, a large chunk of carries. Dylan! <laughs> Dylan! <laughs> so, oh, Arnold, I remember that movie, uh, Predator. Dylan! <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens with Dylan. And, I'm, and, th and this is what makes me excited about the podcast next week because it's going to be really important to talk about running back touch share and percentage share, right? I think that's going to be huge. And then we're going to talk more about the running backs that are going to get the catches and the running backs that's going to take the snaps um, you know, for rushes. And then we're going to talk about goal line, you know? I'm excited for that next week. I think that's probably one of the most creative type podcasts that we do different than others. Right, Dave? It is definitely. It's, it's, it's a good podcast to listen to. If you're wondering about which bass are get the carries and which ones are going to have the biggest time shares as well. And it probably takes me one of the longest time to prep for that one. So I'll start, I'm going to be starting probably right away this, this middle of the week here. So we'll get that down, Dave, but it's great because we kind of feed off each other and learn from each other on that. So real important. Uh, I think that's going to be the most important prep that you're going to have moving into wide receiver sleepers. Same deal. I mean, I have Jamar chase pretty high. 
higher than more, most people do. I have Devontae Smith uh, a bit higher than uh, most people. And obviously Chase Claypool and stuff like that. Uh, Odell Beckham, I have him higher. I don't need to mention those guys. They're not really considered sleepers. So I'm going to get into the later ones. LaVisca Chenault, I think, is going to get a lot more play at Jacksonville now. And I know that uh, DJ Shark is there, but LaVisca Chenault could take over there for Shark as the number one pass catcher there. Mike Williams from the Chargers. I mean, just a better quarterback with Herbert should get him more involved. Henry Ruggs for the Raiders. I think people forget about Ruggs. Can't forget about Ruggs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Elijah Moore, of course, for everything we just said. Darnell Mooney from the Bears. I think that Mooney can have a really big year if, with Justin Fields there. And he was he just seemed like the best receiver last year. I know A-Rob... Yeah, Robinson there is a contract year, and he likes to complain a little bit, but I wonder if uh, Darno Mooney gets a lot of play because of that. You know, That's interesting to me. Uh, Emmanuel Sanders, he's still Emmanuel Sanders, and he's going to be the number two receiver from one of the most richest guys in football, Josh Allen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I read that he makes $1.60 a second after that wow. contract. Dollar sixty cents. The, the the headline said it's not even worth him to pick up dollars on the ground. <laughs> 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 oh my god, it's filthy. Uh, next, I have Rashad Bateman. You know, for some of the same reasons that we said, I think Bateman could be a a really good, really good receiver out in Baltimore. So, really excited for him. Who are your uh, receivers, David? I got a few here too. I'm going to try and just skip over some of the rookies that we already touched base with on, in, earlier in the podcast. But the number, my number one guy was Mike Williams. I do like him a lot this year as the number two guy uh, with Bear there. I think he could have a great year. Uh, Jerry Juddy, a lot of people forgot about him. Uh, he's in his second year now. I think he's going to do a lot better in his second year now that he's learned uh, what the NFL is like. Uh, we'll just see what the quarterback situation. It depends on the quarterback there too. It depends on if Locke or Bridgewater starts. But I do like J- Juddy as a nice sleeper. Uh, Michael Pittman, he came on towards the middle to end of the year. Uh, I think Hilton is kind of like on his last legs there. Uh, it depends if Paris Campbell can stay healthy, too. He hasn't in the past, so I think Pittman could be have a large chunk of sh- targets there. Uh, depends on who's throwing to though, him as well, though. But I think he could be the number one guy there, definitely. Uh, Gabriel Davis for the Bills. He actually had a good year, too, as the, as the third wide out there. I think he's going to get a lot of looks this year, too. Josh Allen likes to throw the ball. Uh, he, Josh Allen's Played awesome last year, MVP level type. Uh, and Gabriel Davis, I think he's a nice sleeper. Uh, I like Brian Edwards instead of Henry Ruggs. Uh, Brian Edwards, they say, is going to be a starter. Uh, he's been running with the number one offense so far the first couple weeks of camp. Uh, they say that the rave reviews about Brian Edwards. Uh, Ruggs could be a sleeper down the road, but I, I definitely like Edwards more. Uh, he's not the speed guy like Ruggs, but I, I definitely think he could be more of a possession guy. Uh, I do like Jacoby Myers. Uh, they don't really have many pass catchers there with Edelman retiring. Uh, whoever's throwing to him, Mac Jones or your boy, uh, Cam Noon, I, I think one of those two. <laughs> my boy, my boy, yeah. <laughs> Jacoby Myers, I think, could be have a good year there. I do like LaVisca Le- Chenault Jr. for the Jaguars like you did. And then definitely a deep sleeper here is going to be the two receivers for the Saints, Traquan Smith and Marquise Callaway. I think with Michael Thomas out, I think one of those guys steps up. I think one of those guys has a huge year uh, with Michael Thomas out. Yeah, what a great point. Didn't even really mention Traquan Smith. I just, I, I guess the whole Saints quarterback thing always scares me away, but I, I feel like it's going to be Traquan S- Smith, right? And it, so who's the other guy? Callaway? Marquise Collier, they said actually that he's been play, playing with the number ones right now because Smith is injured, so he's been taking advantage of him being out. So we'll see. It's, I think it's going to be close between both of those guys. Man, that's interesting because he's like a super sleeper if it's Callaway. So good stuff there, man. All right, let's go to quarterbacks real quick. Not much to talk about, really. I mean, obviously I'm higher on Matt Ryan than the market. I'm higher than Russell Wilson on Russell Wilson than the market for some reason. Because I have him like right by Kyler Murray, right before even before Lamar Jackson, nothing. I, there's nothing really that's a sleeper to me because you have really great numbers on these guys, and the expectations are pretty close to where they're supposed to be this year for quarterbacks, right? I mean, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that Big Ben is gonna be a little bit more value 
just because of all his weapons there he has to throw to, right? So I have him like right next to Cousins, right next to Dak. So in my opinion, Big Ben, I guess Dak would be my somewhat of a bust, but maybe I could be wrong. You never know. And then obviously the the big four rookies, Justin Fields, Trey Lance, Zach Wilson, and Mac Jones. I mean, it's really that simple. You know, and they, at the end of the day, quarterbacks are pretty set, aren't they, Dave? Yeah, definitely. I agree. So my sleeper, I think I like two or two. I like Tua actually for the Dolphins. I think he was thrown into a bad situation kind of last year. He wasn't fully healthy either, I don't think. I think after a, year, a full training camp, uh, coming in, being the starting quarterback to start off, he's fully healthy now. I think Tua could have a huge year. He's my definitely my number one sleeper. Uh, Baker Mayfield, uh, he had a good year last year. I think he, he could be a, definitely a sleeper too, per se. Like you said, most of them are already set and locked in for the quarterbacks, but I think Baker could have a good year. Uh, he's definitely got the weapons. Daniel Jones might be kind of a surprise, but I think they've added some weapons on offense with Saquon back. I think Daniel Jones, I think, could take the next step. Uh, he could kind of surprise some people this year. And then this is going to be a shocker for you, Kia, but I like Jameis Winston or Taysom Hill, whoever starts for the Saints. We don't know who's going to start. I think it's going to be Taysom Hill, to tell you the truth. But I think whoever starts there could actually have a lot of fantasy value. Uh, Hill will get more fantasy value with the rushing yards and rushing TDs and Winston through the air with passing yards. But he'll have throw, definitely throw a lot of picks still. Uh, and then the, my last guy is going to be Drew Locke. Uh, a lot of people were down on him last year. Uh, they think Bridgewater could still do the job for him. I think he wins the job and has a good year, though. Yeah, I can't move them past Jared Goff even until I know what's going on there. He's same with James. I will move him up. I just don't know yet. You know? Exactly. So that's what it is. But what I will say is if Jameis Winston's playing for New Orleans, he's going to be a plug-and-play guy on certain weeks if he's kind of a weak quarterback. Right. Let, let's just say you did draft a Zach Wilson or a Trevor Lawrence, and Lawrence was just – on Jacksonville, he's sucking this year. You never, you know, you might want to like put in a Jameis Winston who's playing like, uh, like, like, say he's playing the Titans or the the Lions or something like that, right? You, that's when you want to play him because he's going to be great against really weak defenses, get, you know, four or 500 yards. So, uh, don't forget what he did like for two, three years ago for Tampa Bay. He put up some huge numbers. Even though he threw a lot of picks, he still put up some huge numbers for them still. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's going to be kind of plug in when needed. So I agree with you. Just don't know yet. I can't move him ahead of Jared Goff until I know that. Let's move on to tight ends to end it off here. Um, my sleepers are Austin Hooper for Cleveland. I think he's finally going to uh, break out a little bit like he did for Atlanta a couple years ago. Anthony Fersker. For sure, I think he's taken over in t uh, Tennessee, and they're going to use him. Johnny Smith got all the love last year. So we'll see what happens with Fersker. I like him. Irv Smith for Minnesota uh, is going to be, you know, I think I have him ranked number 14. Jared Cook I have number 15. Um, so he's kind of a sleeper. A another one is Gerald Everett from Seattle. I think there's a reason that they signed him. He yeah, like yeah, I, th I think he's going to be have a little bit of value there. You know, I I mean, between him and Gronk, I don't know, man. Gronk kind of seems to take the whole year off until the playoffs these days, man. <laughs> I don't know how much I can trust Gronk, to be honest with you. His name just gets him drafted, right? But he doesn't care. He's going he, he's going to uh, shake his fist in Vegas, you know, up in the, he's at the clubs. So <laughs> <laughs> there's no reason for him to uh you know, do great and risk his body until the playoffs. That's kind of the mentality of him lately, in my opinion. So Chris Herndon, I think, might get some passes now. <laughs> I've been waiting for a while for him to. They say he might lose his job, actually, to Robert Griffin or Tyler Kraft now is what they're saying. <sighs> I don't know. I, well, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I didn't. I have him at 26, so he's not drafted. I'm not drafting him. So this would be like a much farther sleeper here. So I, I just mentioned him because maybe now with Zach Wilson, he can actually blow up. And I have a guy to keep your, keep your eye on. And it's Kylan Granson from Indianapolis. I think that, like I said before, he's going to get more play than people think um, and be a little bit of a sleeper there at, at tight end. I think that he's going to take over eventually for Doyle, um, at least from the past catches. Now, I do want a better quarterback play there, so I'm, do, I'm concerned there, but just someone to keep your eye on. And I forgot to mention that Dawson Knox for Buffalo 
has gotten a lot of play last year at tight end the second half of the season. He was one of the leading tight ends from like game, I think it was like game 10 on. I'll, I'll look up that stat, Dave. So um, that's my last one. All right, great. Uh, number one, I had Irv Smith, just for a lot of the reasons we talked about. He's definitely going to be the starter there and the main guy at tight end for them. Uh, and they're going to they're going to be throwing the ball a lot with Cousins there. Uh, number two, we have Blake Jarwin. We talked about him last week. Uh, now that he's back and healthy, I, I like him and Dol- Dolan Schultz could be a nice one-two punch for the Cowboys, and they like love to throw the ball there too. Even though they have a lot of mouths to the feet with all the wide receivers there. Uh, number three, I got Anthony Fisker. We kind of talked about him last week as well, uh, starting tight end for the Titans now. Uh, number four, I have Cole Clement. Uh, I think uh, he could take over the, as the leading receiver tight end there, uh, and, and then with Miller being traded as well. I uh, like that. And then Jimmy Graham, I, don't, I think he's kind of towards the end of his career now as well. He's been a good mentor, but I think he's going to take over a lot of receptions from Jimmy Graham. Uh, number five, the guy we talked about last week as well, Adam Trotman. Adam Trotman for the Saints. Uh, it's going to depend on the tight end or the quarterback who's throwing to him, but I still think he gets a lot of targets this year, especially with Michael Thomas out. Number six, I had Dawson Knox. Uh, I do like him as well, like you said. He's one of the leading tight ends. He had, I think he had like four or five TDs. He had almost a TD a game, I think, towards the end of the year, like you were saying. Yeah. Uh, he had TDs. Uh, and then he had, at the position in target separation, he was at 2.26 per target separation. And he's a good TD or a bust candidate for most weeks as well. Yeah. And number seven. O.J. Howard is my last guy. Uh, like you said, I would, I'm not sold on Gronk, and he kind of just shows up when he wants to. Uh, O.J. Howard is more athletic now, I think, than Gronk as well. Uh, he's coming back from a torn Achilles, but I think if, if healthy, I think O.J. Howard can kind of take over that lead role for the Tampa Bay tight ends. Yep, yep. O.J. Howard, I, I always wonder about that. Now, he would be lead, but don't you still have Cameron Bright there? You do, so it's kind of kind of a horse apiece, but I think O.J. Howard is definitely the more athletic of the all three of those tight ends. You know what so. sucks about Howard is that we've been saying that so much, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, for years we've been saying that. When's he gonna, wasn't he from Bama? I thought he was. I, I can't remember where he's from, to tell you the truth. But, yeah, like you said, he's been on the sleeper list for the last three, four years, I think. He's never really busted out, but I think this is going to be his year. This is what I'm. That's what I'm saying. But he's my sixth. Or number seven on my list of sleepers, so I'm not ranking him that high on my sleeper list, anyways. Yeah. Okay. So with Dawson Knox, he did. He only had three TDs, but they all came week twelve, week thirteen, and week fifteen. So, um, you know, not bad fantasy stats for those weeks. He did falter off on sixteen. He only got uh, three catches for fifty-one yards, which isn't exactly a goose egg. It gets about seven. No, yeah, it's, it's seven points. So I just see upside with him because they're using him more now. And so, uh, you know, throwing to a big tight, tight end is nice. He used to have to split some time there. Now he doesn't. So good stuff, Dave. Anything we missed for this podcast? I don't think so. Just uh, tune in next week for our timeshare for our running backs. It's going to definitely be a great uh, podcast episode uh, and then good luck in all your drafts this week and next in the following weeks awesome yes good luck to you guys if you have any questions feel free to tweet us at the odds breakers have a great rest of your week enjoy the games and go get some winners